Okay, so a small introduction about myself and my team. Um, I work for NXP Semiconductors inside the mobile robotic team. Uh, we are multinational teams uh, across uh, Netherlands, Germany, France, USA, Canada, Mexico. Uh, and we work on uh, reference designs and development platforms for autonomous rovers and drones. Uh, our first project we started with PX4 was the uh, FMU K66 flight controller. And we also have been extending it with uh, CAN nodes, Ethernet nodes, and also battery management system. Also, uh, we are holding a hover games contest, which is also using the uh, PX4 uh, subsystem. So the uh, contents for today, I'm going to give a short introduction about the PX4 Muir messaging. Then uh, I give an introduction to a PX4 distributed architecture and how to run Muir over uh, UAV CAN. So short introduction to PX4 Muir messaging. Uh, Muir is the uh, internal privilege of Stripe mechanism that PX4 uses to communicate between different uh, modules inside the PX4 firmware. It's typically, you can co could compare it to uh, ROS uh, or MQTT, uh, where you can uh, set up this publish subscribe mechanism. The only difference is that in Europe, it's focused on inter-thread, inter-process communication. So the communication still stays on the PX4 MCU. And uh, the picture below would be example uh, of such a public subscribe uh, mechanism where a sensor could uh, publish some data over topic A, and there could be m multiple data also to uh, topic B, and a, a processing node subscribes to that data and processes that data. Um, so communication between those PX4 modules uh, is done using lots of different messages. In the PX4 guide, there is this uh, nice picture about all the different messages there are. Um, like I said before, it's a decipher internal communication, but PX4 also provides uh, bridges to other protocols to externally uh, see those messages, send a message or communicate with it. Typically this is used uh, to connect a PX4 fly, uh, autopilot to a Linux based companion system, but not really for a distributed architecture. Uh, and the picture here below, you would see the uh, example of an airspeed sensor message. So it's a uh, strict definition of different fields of data and that gets published on this uh, Muir bus. So PX4 distributed architecture. So typically you would have only a, a flight controller uh, to fly your plane, but what you see is that we're people are expanding that with a companion computer for uh, autonomous functionality for 4G, smart connect, uh, but we want to go one step further and it's also expanded with uh, with sensor nodes, but not really sensor nodes which just provides data, but just smart sensor nodes that also can do some processing and you could share the uh, state estimators or you duplicate them over a, a shared bus. Um, so for this uh, setup and demo, we've been working mostly on the UCAN SRTK146 board, which uh, is a 100 megahertz M4 part, provides uh, dual CAN bus, and has a UART I2C SPI interface to uh, convert some sensors. So typically you could uh, convert a GPS or an IMU or a distance sensor, you could make it a smart can note, but you could also uh, do some uh, state estimation on top of that as well. Um, also, we have some servo uh, connection, and uh, on top of this, uh, we also have the SE050 uh, security chip, which you can use to uh, store uh, encrypted data, but also authenticate these nodes. Because we're decoupling them, sometimes you would like to know the authenticity of the modules and also have a uh, can generate a certificate of the whole distributed system. Um, the name moment of the distributed Arch and PX4. So uh, we have made some several PX4 can peripherals right now. Uh, we hooked up the uh, the U can node uh, to a GPS where we could make a GPS node of it. We uh, have the BMS nodes based on the same chip and. Um, uh, we also can control some server motors with that. 
And we're trying to expand that now with airspeed and with distance sensors. And the idea is that then, uh, yeah, it would have a distributed uh, system with multiple GPSs that can be published to the whole system. So there's no point-to-point -point connection between the, the flight controller or a G, uh, GPS. And the IMU data also doesn't have to be uh, double translated. So Mirabo over UAV CAN. So a quick introduction to UAV CAN. UAV CAN is a, a lightweight protocol designed that can work on top of a boat of classical CAN, also called CAN 2.0B or CANFD, which uh, CANFD is backwards compatible, but improves the uh, data throughput. So what does uh, UAV CAN do? Well, it takes care of the networking transport and presentation of the data where um, usually CAN messages are single messages containing data, UAV can convert that into big transports and combine that data again. Um, for more information specific about UAV can, last year, uh, Pavel gave a presentation on the PX4 Summit 2020. So I would advise to check that one out. So what about MIRP over UAV can? So what we do different compared to the normal UAV can is that we uh, use the packetized transfers from UAV can, uh, but then we use the data serialization from the internal PX4 subsystem, which allows us to reuse all the messages that have been defined and also expose the internal state estimators or expand them easily into the PX4 subsystem. So this is really the idea that you make this distributed architecture by exposing the internals to a communication bus. So how would something like that look like? So on the left, we would have a, uh, a CAN node that has a GPS and um, running UAV CAN one. Then uh, we publish the GPS data in, in the internal sensor GPS data from PX4. And uh, from the FMU side, we, it just receives the sensor GPS message as an extra topic. And therefore, it gets an extra GPS source, which it can use for the EKF2 uh, state estimator. Uh, so current state of MIRP over UV can in the PX4. So uh, what we've been working on, it's, it's already upstream in uh, PX4. It's still work in progress to expand it, but uh, the, the base is there. And what can we do there now? We can we have implemented the UAV CAN V1 protocol. We have a dynamic node allocation, and uh, we have set up the mechanism to include uh, your publishers and subscribers. Current uh, functionality is basic for just uh, testing. Um, we still have some to do's. We want to make a unified application for both FMU and nodes or multiple FMUs where we could make this uh, distributed architecture, expanded for, for all the MUARP topics. We right now only have tested a subset and um, also expose the remote configuration. So right now we would need to uh, use uh, QGround control separately on all modules, but we want to see if we can make some kind of proxy, proxy mechanism where one uh, FMU connected to uh, QGC could control all the system in the distributed architecture and uh, also uh, the setup of nodes. So right now there's a plug and play protocol, but we still have to set up the port identifiers. Um, also want to note that MIRP over UAV CAN is uh, something different than the UAV CAN standardization effort. Uh, so two remarks about that. Uh, first, it can be used in combination with uh, the UAV CAN uh, Patron application layer specification, but it's also not uh, deemed to replace it. So in this example, we uh, use a GPS, uh, but we would rather, if we, there is a GPS a standardized message, I would really advise uh, to use that. And uh, today, Dimitri is also going to give a presentation on the PX4 Summit as well. So I would advise you to check that one out as well. So at last we have a small demo because it's always nice to see me talk about it, but it's also always nice to know if you can also actually fly with it. So my colleague has also been testing this. So what you see here is that uh, the flight controller is connected uh, over CAN to the uh, UAV CAN node and the GPS is connected directly to that node. 
as you can see, there is, well, it's hard to see, but the, there is no GPS connected to the FMU node. So all GPS data is first being processed by the uh, you can note running PX4 firmware, running PX4 drivers, and also running this MIUR subsystem, and that's exposed uh, to the flight controller. And here we have a, a predefined flight path mission that is, will be carried out when the sensor data is then uh, based on uh, GNSS. Uh, next steps regarding this, uh, we would really like to see if we can uh, come up with a, with a strategy to uh, expand it with uh, multiple FMUs or uh, expand it to uh, making smarter nodes, uh, either a more smart battery that, that does uh, more uh, communication with, with PX4 exposes that or more state estimation in the GPS as well to uh, combine that or offload the, the flight control as well. And here you can see that uh, we finished the mission and we sent land successfully. Um, in the YouTube link, uh, you can also find the P4 flight log of this flight. And also you can see uh, the GPS uh, output that has been tunneled uh, through uh, UAV cam. Okay, well, that was my presentation. Um, let me check if there are any questions. But is it automatically when you have can or is, oh, let me just read it aloud. Sorry, if I missed this, I didn't catch the beginning of presentation, but this is automatic translation of Europe to UAV can, or is it manual translation between two, the required? Um, so the assumption is that both systems run the exact same version of PX4. Therefore, they would use the same message sets from px4 because uh, it's not a standardized message set and what's happening on the highest layer side is that we don't even translate so we take the raw payload of the muir and we just use your if can to send over the the raw payload of that so no translation is required so technically that would mean that there is also less uh, cpu load involved uh, but we haven't done any profiling yet. What would be the uh, performance cost or what would be the pro uh, to uh, UAV can uh, standardize messages? But this is more about uh, flexibility and also custom systems and also to see if we have uh, combined systems. Uh, okay, second one. Any thoughts about handle software versions of the, between FreeFlows and FMU? In the case of your message format changes in one of them, do you always build all from the same source tree. Um, yes, so uh, in this case, um, you can uh, use the standard UVK message to check out uh, what's the uh, message uh, version um, of the nodes. And the idea would be that you check if all the PX4 firmers are built from the same commit ID and uh, the nodes have also implemented the um, UV can bootloader uh, protocol. So the idea is then that the flight controller would flash all the nodes to the correct version. Uh, what are your thoughts on time synchronization between all nodes? Uh, good question. Um, so the idea was to uh, use the time synchronization uh, specified in the standard messages of uh, UAV cam. I haven't looked in there uh, that directly because uh, it goes a bit further where it also uses the uh, physical clocks on the bus and you can get a nice uh, time synchronization through the, the can clock itself. And then um, we still need to figure out then which node would have a GPS if you really want to have the uh, absolute time as well, the day, date of time. Um, but that has also been covered uh, in the UV can protocol itself. Okay, well, interesting questions. Oh, there's one popping in as well. How do you handle priority between multiple messages from multiple sensors in uh, Canvas? Um, yes, okay, so um, 
UEV can thus uh, prioritization. Um, and we were also thinking about the rate limiting. But uh, looking at this right now, um, we didn't do anything on that. Actually, we have to see if we can uh, combine this with the uh, rate limiting and priority system of Muir. Uh, but in UAV can itself, there are uh, solutions for that. And also, uh, we have to think about the efficiency of exposing certain internal message structures of Muir because uh, internal communication, of course, is way faster uh, than a, a physical canvas. So those are also the limitation of going outside. Okay, yeah, challenging questions. By the way, also thanks for the advice because I think those are nice questions we want to tackle as well in uh, future development. And uh, let me go back some slides. So I would just... Oh advice to just check out the code and we're actively developing on it. And also um, we're happy to expand it to, to other uh, standards of, uh, or uh, yeah, standardization of messages. Okay, um, let me just do a quick round of q and A. I I think I've got it all covered. So um, uh, if you want to, oh, I think you overlooked me. Just, Last year you gave first, what has proved, proved more, more? Oh, I think you overlooked my question. So here we go again. Last year you gave a very similar presentation. What has improved since? What more capabilities can you provide now? Um, so actually last year, most uh, has been either uh, software or uh, bench setups. And actually right now uh, we have uh, implemented on a uh, flying drone. That was one case. And also, uh, we have been trying to see what um, standardization uh, we could do. Fortunately, that wasn't that successful. And that's also the long path. And that's where we actually picked this up again. And also try to get all the code now in, in master and get one uh, single application for the UEV can V1. Um, can can UV can be used to integrate an external IMU into, for example, the Pixhawk? Um, yes, uh, I think it's a very general question. Maybe there are some uh, specifics, uh, but as long as a IMU has a uh, CAN interface, uh, you could even use the, the old UV CAN V1 uh, protocol or UV CAN V, uh, sorry, V0 protocol or V1 protocol. Um, yeah, for right now, I would still advise that for, for general purpose, we have to figure out the, the standardization effort. Um, and I think this is, uh, for me, or I think it's more interesting to uh, do uh, some, some processing as well and offloading as well. Okay. What are the minimal sets of sort software artifacts needed to implement this? Can virtually any currently supported PX4 sensor be connected to adapter board to fed to the FMU? Um, so in the case where I'm talking about is the uh, UCAN S3GK146 board, um, which is not a PX4 FMU, but it runs the Nerdex operating system and also the PX4 firmware. And therefore, you get all the drivers uh, from uh, PX4. So as long as your uh, sensor node supports UART, I squared C, SPI, the interfaces that have been enabled on the S32K 146, you could reuse the PX4 infrastructure to expose uh, the internal data or the drivers uh, to a PX4 FMU flight controller, if that is your question. Yes, PX4 sensor. Also, where is the timestamp taken? Would it be from the point when the sensor pushed the multi-frame message, or is it after the multi-frame message was parsed? Um, so actually, right now, um, I have a workaround when I do it after parsing. And ideally, if the time synchronization has been implemented and we know for sure that the nodes and the flight controller has the same sense of time, then you would want to do that um, on the 
uh, node side. I want to give one uh, remark though about the question about real time as well. Um, inside UAV can, as you want to uh, publish and subscribe, you can also provide a deadline. And if you have a deadline, you, uh, since you can is real time, you can assure those deadlines. So uh, of course, from timestamping, it's not really correct when to add a timestamp when you have received it. Um, but you can still uh, say something about the determinism of the message. Okay, uh, yes. Would it be the point since I pushed the frame? Yes, yeah, so uh, clarification about the multi frame. It's really when the multi frame, the last frame has been received. At that moment, uh, uh, we know the timestamp. So it's not uh, in the first message of the multi frame. And again, if the multi frame transfer takes too long, the message simply gets dropped because it doesn't pass the deadline. Okay. Well, Thanks uh, for the uh, enthusiastic questions. And um, if you want to reach me, um, I think you can see the, the comments on, uh, on the GitHub. And otherwise, um, you can also just share my GitHub profile. So I'll just paste my GitHub profile in the chat for people who are interested. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions also when implementing, uh, also on the PX4 Slack, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to help. Okay, wish you guys a, a nice day, and uh, check also the uh, other interesting uh, UAV camp, uh, talks that will be given today. Okay, bye.